Cool. All right, fellas. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be here. I know you guys have a busy schedule here in Augusta, Georgia, home of the Masters. Oh, cracking a cold one of Red Bull, sugar free. Sugar free edition. Tough I week. do. I, yeah, we sorry. stay off the real stuff. So real when, sugar. When Matt came in, we got. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but you got the Coke can in Copenhagen. Oh, that's right. Shout out to your new song, "Take the Girl." <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if you were going to get it. We had to kind of guide him there a little bit. You Ray did. thought it was for him. So, I did. Well, I assume this is for me. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to make some joke that Classic I was putting together right. in my mind. And then it hit me that it was, I was way off the, I was way off the path that I was supposed to be on. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty good. Uh, I did get you thought. something now. That is pretty did you? And that is oh, Mr. Payday Ray. Oh my Lord. Wow. Come on. I was going to try to like some. I need some uh, breakfast anyway. So thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Underrated candy bar. Good it it candy really is. My mom, Sheila Fulcher, will absolutely go to town on a payday right here. So what? I'm actually going to save this and give it to her. But let me ask you this. Why is it that that candy bar, that one, and the Baby Ruth, and nobody mm-hmm. wants to admit to liking those? That's it, the Nickelback of candy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I love Nickelback. Like you break that thing open, you're like, who can't like it? And then, But you're right, though. Nobody ever goes, man, I really want a payday. I can't right wait now. till I get that payday. Yeah. Man. Hey, y'all stop. I need to run into the uh quick stop. I need to grab a payday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one ever. Yeah. No yeah. one ever. In the friend zone <clears throat> at that point for sure. The yeah. marketing team just sucks, I guess. Because <laughs> I like them. I do t- I think we could rebrand that and come out as a vintage candy bar. There's and your next venture. Mike could pay a house payment or two. That's yeah. right. Like like Grandpa McGillicuddy's old timey <laughs> old timey <laughs> peanut roll. That's right. Made with artisan <laughs> Georgia. Peanuts. That's right. And nobody knows what, I mean, the, the McGillicuddy's just flew over 98.3% of the people listening's head, too. Yeah, well, I, they I'm included in that. Little Dr. McGillicuddy's? Uh, I'm included in Sorry. that. For the older generation. Sorry, just do your research. It's all right. Well, um, <laughs> this is DJ Stelly Stell's first time in Augusta, and I feel like you can't come back here now because you've already topped. The bar's been set too high. Way too yeah. high. Uh, my first uh, experience at Augusta National was – Rolling down Magnolia Lane and parking thirty Shoot. yards from the uh, from the f- number one tee, basically. So I don't know. And then I saw the cat um, hit some giant uh, drives that mm. kind of fan to the right a little bit. But the cat, nonetheless, so, so high. I still can't get around how them drives. He hits work. a golf ball so high, which I it's amazing. But yeah, I don't know how. And then we went and had lunch behind these ropes. I had no yeah. business being behind and uh, walked walked out the way people walked in, and I saw the line that you have to stand in. And I would do it because it's worth it, but now I don't know that I could do it. <laughs> now I'd be like, what, what is it's this? It's like you've gone too – you know too much to go back. That's right. Thing. That's right. It was yeah. amazing. Special yeah. day. I mean, and then to top it off, I don't know if you guys like – like work the way that most people don't like work or you know we were just you guys got to play yeah, uh, we the tailor made party yeah. so but is it like that for you guys like do you like going to work quote unquote man we do we it's funny we on the way here we were just talking about that and it's like you know as much, any job that there is right there's like always good and bad parts of <laughs> yeah, it you know yeah. and there's not every day is not a day that you get up and you're like man i cannot wait to write a song or go play a show or whatever because there's so many variables that are happening and we're, we're all human. Um, but we were just talking about, like, when we set this thing up and, you know, we're coming and while we're here, we're, you know, we're going to be working, you know, for a couple of the days here. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going, man, when I asked him to, to do this and when he said yes, he goes, all we had to do was check our calendar and go, yeah, that sounds great. There was no, like, man, let me check with the boss or let me, yeah. you know, whatever, check, which is really cool part about our job. We just kind of get to, you know, it's a, a thousand ways you can cut it, a thousand ways you can do it, but you get to do it the way that you want to do it. And so the bad days doing what we do, I think, are a whole lot better yeah. than the bad days doing something else. Yeah, you know? for so, sure. Because, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Like, we played in this uh, in this vendor tent, like not tent, like this vendor event was very nice, <laughs> but like – no one except our immediate friend group that we knew gave the first damn 
about <laughs> about what we were doing. I mean, I think by the time Ray had played, you know, a couple number ones, people, you know, had their phones out, were kind of taping for a course, and then going back to trying to like get invited to play golf at Augusta National, or I still just uh, thought they were covers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this guy sounds good singing these Luke Combs songs. Yeah. Great cover uh, band. Yeah, and it was still like like even in the moment, it's still fun. Like we just. Yeah. Play, he played me a bunch of new songs sitting on a bar stool in front of people, and then sometimes it's the best thing in the world. But like, even yeah. when it's not, it's good. Yeah, and like, and that's what I was saying too. It goes it, once you kind of the other night, like you're a couple songs in, and you kind of okay, you get a feel of what this is. Yeah, yeah. Then it turns into like, hey, let's just I'm just gonna have fun with my buddy. Like, let's play some new stuff and cut up, you know. And so, even in those moments that aren't like these things you're gonna remember 30 years from now, I probably will remember sitting there, right? You know trading songs and stuff and um just making a moment try we get opportunities to make really cool memories even in the moments that you wouldn't think that there will be a lot you know so that's that's awesome yeah don't you think it's similar to the i mean sitting at the campfire i mean it's no different i mean it's just it was a very high-end campfire we were sitting yeah i mean it's Yeah. With with uh, <laughs> uh, with some fairly disinterested uh, campfire attendant attendees, but yeah, Col- you tell Colin Morikawa he needs to give us a little bit more um, of his attention next time he's around. Uh, they were like trespassers. It's like <laughs> yeah. we're at the campfire and everybody's just walking up, <laughs> yeah. like, "What are y'all doing here?" Yeah, and yeah. it was very nice. It very was awesome. fun. It was awesome. Would yeah. do it again, but sometimes you get a guitar out and people just hear the first note and I feel like it's a lot that way kind of in, you know, the south or, you know, in the middle part. And you get a guitar out and people it's just like, you know, turning a bug light on to to a bunch of mosquitoes and they're yeah. just like, <laughs> "Oh, that's where we're supposed to be. Let's uh-huh. go do that." But, you know, when it's that kind of environment where people are really kind of there to like, you know, call what it like network, yeah, you know, get, sure. get work done. It's still, it's still so fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. I liked how y'all separated yourself and you got your own zone. You know, yeah, it means it awesome. I'm trying to manage the situation cause I'm not used to sitting back, letting things happen. that way. <laughs> I want to go ahead and get on the offensive side of things and say, I'm going to give you guys about 30 seconds to shut up, quit having these little sidebars. We do have a couple people up here that need about, 70 minutes of your time. <laughs> right. But Turn then you got to realize also what you're there for. And, yeah. And, and yeah. And it, was, it, it, and it was awesome because we met so many cool people and, um, and very thankful we got asked to do it. So. Absolutely. We get to go to Carlsbad, California oh, yeah, coming do. up here Come on. and get outfitted with all the new sticks. RIP my old stealth because now I'm getting whatever new letters that they've got yeah. on the driver. <laughs> An appropriate size, too. Exactly. Yeah. A, a size befitting of someone who can't fit into door frames. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. I was so I hadn't known how tall you were, but we were talking to the Chase and Birdies boys, and they were saying how like it just looked like you were playing with tooth. Jonathan Pepe time. and uh, oh, Big Bash. Bash. Bash, yeah. And then I saw a photo of you next to Bash, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's tall, dude." Yeah, like so. Yeah, so we're going. Taylor Made has just cost Ray a lot of money because they're about <laughs> to fix me up with the appropriate clubs, and now. My, I'm just gonna just absolutely take you to the cleaners. Brought my man down, Augusta. We play a show for Taylor Made. He's gonna get fitted up right, and then starting now, I ain't gonna be able to have nothing. That's right. You knew I you knew I was a rattlesnake when you brought me down I here, did. and you put your head in the cage. You can't I be did. mad at me biting you. You knew I was a rattlesnake. It's over now. Exactly. It's over. Ball game. That's so funny. That's so funny. I do want to talk about your claim, Matt, to be the best ball player. And all of music, not yeah. even country. No, I am. Rap. Yeah. I mean, all, all those. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's been some great, there's been some great rappers uh, that played two chains in his day. Master P was probably the best one. Women Tisdale, the uh, jazz bass player, RIP, you know, he was probably the best of us. He played at, at Kansas, but I'm going to go get mine and I'm better than, <laughs> I'm better than the rappers. All of them. Line yeah. them up. I'm I maybe not better now than than all of the NFL guys because you know they're they're playing at a level of athleticism that I no longer or never could reach. But I tell you that I'm gonna get mine. Always, I got no doubt. Yeah. You ain't even just. I mean, you take a step further than the hat. The hat says better than most. Yeah, it's better than all in music. So, yeah. <laughs> in music. In, in music. music. Yeah. Like if you have, if 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 the threshold is like you know a platinum record or something, I'm the best. <laughs> Like I'm like yeah. the I'm like you know, 
sound really immodest right now, but I just say all that because I want to get invited to the Celebrity All-Star Game so bad, and they don't give a shit. <laughs> well, you're very humble. Uh, uh, you know, it's the humble version of Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because he has the asterisk in music. Yeah, exactly. In music. He's like, look, I'm not trying to step out on a huge limb here. Yeah. I'm just telling you, in music, there's nobody better. That's right. Of all the of all the dorks that learn how to play guitar like us, like yeah. of, of all the fellow music nerds, yep. I, I, am, I, I got them. I got them. At you least. should put that little series together. Like you just go when you go on tour, just yeah. find like some team and just post up. Yeah. Body those people. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. It's kind of a lot of pressure there. Though. I kind of like talking about it better than doing it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, you're not six seven, so yeah, but I'm quick or six eight, whatever. Scrapping quick. <laughs> That's right. You need, and you need that, you know, on a ball team. I get gotta have it. I get him the ball. Yeah, and a collegiate basketball player at that, right? Drury University. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was D two, whatever. So Shout like, out, Big D. That's right. <laughs> He's over there balling at the Drury. At the Drury. Yeah. Yeah, we you know we have some good teams, you know, yeah. but. I feel like a lot of country music artists are involved in sports in some way. I mean, you were involved at UGA with the quarterbacks, right? Yeah. I wish I played. Talk about an asterisk. Yeah. Or asterisk. Asterisk. An asterisk. Yeah. There's somebody named that in the annual. Did you see that? Uh-uh. There was a girl. Her name was asterisk. Really? <laughs> no way. I wanted to hear There's the backstory. There's no way. I never got the backstory. Her, does her Hold sister up. name Ampersand? <laughs> <It's> some, <laughs> she got a cousin named Ellipsis. That's what it is. And she didn't look like an asterisk to me. Mm. But I, I kind of looked and I thought, man, they left a, like a an error in there, like when they were putting her name, like asterisk. Let's fill in this name right. when, we, when we figure it out and <laughs> no, spell it or something. That's just it. No, that's the name. It's pretty that's cool. So that's a crazy name. Starry eyed, maybe asterisk. That's right. So it's interesting. Right. This is the Thursday morning of the Masters. I just want to get mm-hmm. a real quick prediction. Who you guys? Who you guys got this year? I mean, it never. I feel like Augusta never goes for the most part. Goes like. There's always someone yeah. that that is. It feel like going into the lead on Saturday with, uh, and you go, man, how's this guy got three or four stroke lead? There's always, I feel like that guy, and then one of the one of the big dogs is always kind of lurking, and yeah, it makes yeah. on Sunday is is wild. I think, I mean, I always go back. This has nothing to do with it, but I always go back to. <laughs> so let's throw it. In yeah, there. so let's throw it in there. <laughs> I always go back to me and you watching. Brooks last year and last year he was runner up Mm -hmm. I think right yeah and I've never seen golf balls come off a club like that not that that matters about the Masters but ever since that moment I've been kind of like following him a little bit more it feels to me like his sort of time it feels like he's pretty locked in yeah so that's my I mean that's my guy for the week um on all my pools I double down on him so I hope I'm right uh but I mean I think Wyndham Clark is going to play well. I think, I mean, Scotty's going to play well. Like, obviously, that's the, you know, elephant in the room, everybody. He's Scotty, yeah. right? And he's on a historic little run. Um, and he's going to have something to say, I think, if my guy for the week um, is Brooks. So, Brooks Kepka. Wow. Yeah, Brooks Kepka. Some big step out there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Who you got, Matt? Uh, well, in all my pools, I took Scotty Scheffler. I mean, he's he's striking the ball. I mean, at a at a Tiger level uh, over the past uh, well this year and going back to last year, and everybody knows that his Achilles heel can be that uh, can be that putter. But even if he puts middle of the pack, he's almost unbeatable because he hits it so close and so good. He's already won one. I'm a big believer at the Masters about um, people who have. Uh, been there before you know so like i would love to see Wyndham clark do well but the track record of first timers is just not not great uh, i'd like to see uh Oberg, uh get out there and and i uh, do his thing love his game um some smooth s- smooth so smooth. smooth some deep cuts like uh like him and um uh after uh i, I don't think he'll do well either because he's another first timer but um baktia that won last week in that playoff made that huge putt uh <laughs> Against uh, McCarthy hitting you know eight birdies down the stretch and and still finishing it out, be great to see him. Um, but oh, Akshay Akshay Batia Batia yeah Akshay Batia Slenderman yeah, the Slender love that name. <laughs> Dude. Oh yeah Akshay we need Akshay to introduce him Batia. to Asterisk name Hall of Fame. That, if he didn't have somebody that might be a match. It was we were at Heritage last year, and he came walking down and it's you know it's a little different vibe at Heritage, thankfully because it's a great weekend but. He come walking down, and everybody's kind of quiet, random fairway. I can't even remember which one it was. 
And I said, let's go walk Shay. And it, you'd have thought I shot at him. He, he, I was the only person, I promise you, that hollered at him the entire tournament. And he, we were all, you know, funny. some friends of ours, we were together and we were walking. I said, let's go walk Shay. And he jumped and looked back and he didn't even give me the old smile. He'd give me the head down, like, don't shoot. You know, mm-hmm. like, please don't kill me. It was, I love Akshay. That's, I was a, at that's the, a slick uh, pick. I went to the players practice round and some like little kid was like, hey. This is neither here nor there, but he was like, hey, can I get an autograph? And Akshay was like, later, bud. He's so I was like, oh, that's a bad move. <laughs> it is. I mean, can you be too dialed to give an autograph? I mean, you guys get hit up all the time. Yeah, but it's it's a little different. A little like, different, yeah. You know, it's it's like I'm never going to get jarred out of, like, what I'm doing probably. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, like, I don't have to have the focus to sing prayed for you for the 5,000th time, you know, I can yeah. kind of do that and not, and, and deal with distractions. Let's yeah, say, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes we're, you know, I wouldn't say drunk, but not sober we're going on stage anyway. So if we're going to, yeah, if we're going to let those loose ends drag, we can certainly sign a, an autograph at least at any, second. at any given time. I don't, yeah. Could you imagine being halfway through born lately and just being like, what? Like asking, being asked yeah. for an autograph You'd midway be through a song, pretty quick, I think. Yeah, yeah, like in the middle of the song, I would. T- you, yeah, I mean, people will do the, like. It, it goes to show you that in any any line of work that you're in, if people people like knew what it was, what it entailed, it would be way different than what they think it is. Mm-hmm. Like anything from apparel to podcasting to writing songs to like performing, right? So, like, I'll be on stage playing guitar, and I'll have somebody trying to, like, hand me something from the crowd. And I'm like, <clears throat> clearly both my hands are occupied. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm literally playing guitar. I can't grab that. Or my my favorite thing now, this sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not. I mean, I'm glad people just, care. Just, just behind the curtain a little it bit. Just people, yeah. have, people don't, like, it, it doesn't register, you know, like, whatever. I'm glad that people care. But they will write it on their phone, like on the screen, and hold it up. And I can't not read it. Like, I can't not. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I did that to you the other night. Yeah, yeah. And I like, sometimes I go. It's like you shook a pitch off. Yeah, I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, I, look, I, I don't I like, have another nah. I, I don't, don't remember what it one. said. I just remember going, nah. I was like, I don't have another one on deck. I don't have a next pitch. This yeah. is what I got to hear. <laughs> yeah. And I just have to act like I, I, I just have to ignore a lot of them. And I'm just so surprise like how long a girl will hold up a phone that says it's her birthday <laughs> and i'm yeah. like and, and i'm like looking and it, it's several like several songs and then i'll, I'll finally you know sometimes if i see it i'm like you know oh happy birthday off the mic or whatever like that because but again because of how i frame this it sounds like i'm complaining i'm not complaining it's just an interesting, interesting thing yeah that um and another and another thing quickly that is the same as golf is if you've ever heard someone yell mashed potatoes after someone hits a golf ball and you're like that's a chode <laughs> you know like okay <laughs> bro that is the, that's the that's a first timer yeah. that's the that's the least of all I things hate, you could yeah. say that is the least thing you could say it's the most impoverished phrase that you could utter <laughs> at a golf tournament and in music i'll tell you the um the F word. The, no, the analogy to that is yelling free bird. That's yeah. the F word. I was literally, oh, that's the F word. I'm yeah. on page. I'm so sick and tired of that. Nobody wants you to even play it for real. No <laughs> one's ever, the people that yell it have never heard it played at a bar by a band. Ever. ever. No mm-hmm. one plays it. Like, we, we used to, at the end of the show, since we walk off stage, we would cue it up and it would be playing as that was our last. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. That was our, like, lights come on, stage hands come on, we would play free bird. But nobody's heard it. Nobody wants it. For some reason, it got to be something that people say, and there it's just go. like it's just like may as well just be saying like my first beer. Or, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You know? <laughs> or bless you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Bless you. I also feel like dust on uh, what is it? Dust on the bottle. Dust in the bottle. That's a, that's a jam. But that song gets that played, gets played every, a lot. Yeah. Every like intermediate or mm-hmm. like Man, in between I'm, sets. I would have loved to write one of them where it's just. <laughs> Just set it and forget it, played. dude. I mean, get everyone think, plays it. It still gets. You don't think you have that? Yeah. Huh? You don't think you have that? What Man, are you we'll see. About? We'll see. What do you have about? Ray, we talk about one team to pick from. So yeah, respectfully, <laughs> what are you talking? about? <laughs> <laughs> are you wish you had songs that people played? Are you kidding me? That's the worst. Well, it's take got, I've a, ever it's got a, the thirty year test. No, there's two. So you know, you can say two words, and the whole crowd's with you. Sunday morning. Yeah. And it's over. 
Yeah. That's why that you have to shoot that. Cool. That's their finale. That's why you got to go late. That one, ended, that one ended up pretty good for us. Pretty good. That one bought some beans for you and the boys, yeah, huh? For the boys. Um, yeah, that song is uh, hopefully going to – people will know it in 20 years. We'll yeah. see. 30-year uh, test, right? we got a long time to live to see. Well, you got some bullets in the chamber. Yeah. I'll say that much. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. You got a. Have you listed or told publicly when your album's coming out? Your next album? No. Um, I mean, I, I have another song coming out, um, which I'll tell y'all here. But May tenth, and yeah. then yeah, you don't have to worry. There ain't. I mean, the nine hundred and twelve people that yeah, we're probably <laughs> um, May tenth, and then a, and then uh, your song, the one that you dug the other night, will be coming out after that. Um, a different song, mid June. Something like that. And then that will kind of work towards an album. We're about to record some more stuff. So we just going we just gonna keep rolling them out. Yeah. yeah. But you got Excited. One, you got one marinating right now. Yeah. Oh, you're talking Mid, about the couple mm -hmm. the your Ethan song. You're the one that's twenty four right now? Did it, oh, yeah, it, yeah. Did it break twenty four? So one that yeah, one that I wrote, um, Dylan Carmichael. Dylan, Dylan. Yeah, yeah. Dylan. Um a song which is really cool story about that song. It was seven years old. Um the song is called Drinking Problems. All right. So the story the real quick on that one. Uh, we wrote the song and it was gonna be a Luke song, Combs. And No way. A month later, we're sitting in the truck and then Midland comes out with Drinking Problem. And I just watched it happen. I turn and he goes, Well, can't cut that song now. <laughs> Even though it's a very different song. And so yeah. I'm like, Well, that's just you know, you think in your mind, okay, well that's kinda it for that song. Let me ask you this um, real quick. I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. do you, is there a short amount of time that you consider retitling the song? Yeah, it just didn't. It just wouldn't. Because I know it works. We thought about it. It's always the opposite of what the title is. But I think in that moment, because that song called Drinking Problem was, ended up being a really big hit, and it was like. Pretty good song. Yeah, and it was it was a thing at the time. Mm. And even if we retitled it, the song comes out the first time you hear it. It's gonna every the end of every course is that, and so it probably would have, in his mind at least, would have yeah. been too. And I would agree with him at the time. Mm -hmm. um, seven years later, after we, we wrote that song in twenty sixteen, seven years later, Dylan Carmichael hears it, and you know, the drinking problem, Midland thing is not as much of an issue, right? Seven years ago, whatever, love the song, cuts it, singles it, and then they are working their butt off to uh, country radio on it. And it's yeah, in the mid twenties now, so. Um, I guess just a, a sort of testament with what we do. It's like, you never know. Mm -hmm. And songs, um, like we were listening to those demos last night. I truly feel like somebody's going to cut that song at some point. It's eight yeah. years old. We were listening to a song, um, that's been on hold a few times and, uh, but you never know when they're going to have life, but it's kind of, it's cool when they, um, when they do. Yeah. So. I'm sure now you guys know, like, being this far in, in the game where you write a song, you can kind of tell like, all right, I think this is, this is going to do well on the charts. Yeah. Do you look back and you're like, man, I had some, I have some bangers in the, in the thing, but like, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this too. It's like kind of, and I'll let you speak on this as well. Like, uh, it's not, it's not always the best song. It's not like, I feel like some of my, the best songs that I personally have written mm -hmm. are some songs that have never been recorded. Maybe they will one day, maybe, but it has to be the, the right time and the right whatever all these things have to come together for it to even get as a song from a songwriter perspective um to even get put on hold and then cut and then be heard by enough people yeah to um and but all these things kind of have to fall right which is why we go every day and we write that's and why everybody doesn't do it yeah i mean it's, I mean, it's uh tough. um and sometimes you don't know why some are and some aren't um I'll but I mean, me, I know that. as an artist though, you go, you know, for me at least, it's like, I got a pretty good idea. Not that it's going to be a hit or whatever, but I got an idea while I'm writing it. Yeah. If it's like something that I'm probably going to do mm -hmm. or not. Um, so you have a little bit more control of that on the artist side of it, on the songwriting side. It's Just you don't always, yeah, yeah. but I'll let you kind of speak to that as far as. Well, I have, um, all I know, like, well, I shouldn't say it that way. I said, I know what I like. Mm -hmm. And that's a filter, and I, that has sometimes been – people have treated me because I like stuff that's probably a little bit uh, on the indie side, you know, what I prefer to listen to and I put music on. And I have been treated like that's a liability 
Um, and it can be, but it's also, um, if it makes it through that filter and it makes sense to a, you know, a different audience, then you've, you've kind of like got something, but I would never be the person to say that, like, I know what a hit song is. I just know what I like and I know what I think would work. And, um, it's, I usually like songs that are like the ceiling on them is like pretty big Mm -hmm. i never like the i shouldn't say never but i don't typically have an ear for massive smash yeah you know i have an ear for i like that i think it would do well because it checks my boxes and i can see how other people would like it Mm -hmm. but like when i wrote pray for you i had no idea that song was a quote-unquote hit song i had no idea it was going to change my life i had I, i wrote it i thought we did a good job writing the song i thought it was like a good song but um that's changed changed your life that that song changed many lives well still does and you know i'm i'm very proud of it i never thought you know i thought when i wrote that song i was writing it for like the the luke combs's of the world or the you know fill in the blank of whoever country artist because you know i i was writing the song i wrote it with uh two people but you know allison uh that i wrote it with came in and was like well, we said, what we want to write about? And Allison was like, well, I don't know, but I, I met this guy last night, and I felt like I prayed for him to be, you know, that's who I prayed for. I prayed for him. And she kind of had more than I could fathom. I didn't know you from Adam, but I prayed for you. And we were just like, that's a great idea for a song. Let's write the song. And wrote it in a way that I could sing it, you know. And we all interjected our own, you know, parts of that. Like that main character, I, I the song I tried to make, you know, a lot like me. Uh, so that it would make sense to sing it. But I had no idea it was, you know, going to, I mean, I didn't have a record deal. Um, I barely had a publishing deal at the time when that song came out and it just changed it all. So I'm very humble about that stuff now. Like I, I know what I like and I'm not bashful about that. And, and it, anymore, it ha- I have, to, I've done things in the past where I, it didn't check the box of, I liked it. It was, Oh, people are going to like it. Cause I got talked into like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the I, end of the day. I mean, I'll take the blame. I made the decisions, but it's like the end of the day, it's, you know, when you have some success and you have a bus payment and a payroll and all of that stuff, then you start making decisions based on things that aren't the reason you started playing music in the first place. Yeah. And I thought that's what grownups do. It's time to be a pro. Being a pro is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. You know, that's like a ball player's mm-hmm. mentality. Mm-hmm. But it, um, there is room for that, but the room for that is no one wants to get up at 4 a.m. and and get in the lobby for uh, your flight that you got to take because you, and you got home at one, you know, you got to the hotel at one. Like that's the things that you do. You don't compromise the um, what you think is good because if you do, or I should speak, if I do, it sucks. It's just like oh, it's just like even I could take a good song and make it like okay, mm-hmm. as opposed to the kid that was sitting in his dorm room learning how to play all the acoustic songs and hating a lot of music and liking a little of it and then learning how to, um, you know, do it or whatever, like keeping with that guy. I don't know. Really. I'm so far off on a tangent right now, but no, I love um, him. Keep rocking. But that is how in, in my mind that it has to work on like knowing hits. No, but I have to, it has to check my box and then I will let other people have an opinion on it. If yep. it's for me. Now, yep. if it's for somebody else, that's a different story. Yeah. Two but, different hats. Yeah, two different hats. But as an artist now, like, I just, I can't, like, I can't out, I can't out love song, yep. you know, mm-hmm. Jordan Davis, you know, I can't out, what you know, fill in the blank, right? I had to do my own shit, whatever, it's a podcast. <laughs> uh, and so because of that, like, I check my boxes and then I let people weigh in for the hits. Yep. Um, so, so would you say that, maybe, I'm sorry, that there's a, a fair statement would be that you go into things understanding that the key is the process. The process is always going to be the key. Mm-hmm. You might just not be fully aware of what the actual process is to your point. You know, you, you knew that there were going to be days that you had to do some things that you didn't want to do and look like you're really enjoying it when deep down inside you weren't, you just might not have known where that fell. Like, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I know I'm always learning and, to his point, talking about the um, coming back to being the kid in the dorm room and making sure it checks that box and like that kid and that like um, the same spirit that he had and the reason why you started. It's almost like you um, 
I've got, that's why you start. And then at some point, kind of what you said, you kind of go, you learn these things that maybe you're supposed to do. Right. Or like there's this style of song or whatever is maybe popular now. So there's that thing inside your head that goes, well, maybe I should be doing some of that or whatever. And you go try that. Cause that's what you think you're supposed to do or whatever. You almost have to go do that to get reminded to like come back home. And then I think when you come back, you go, well, I don't really care if like, obviously I want people to love it and I want to be successful, but if it ain't in the, inside the four walls of this thing that I love, it's like, I don't, I'm not really interested because what really matters is like me having to love it or me being passionate about it. Because if not, it's like doing those things, the getting in at one, waking up at four to go here and get catch another plane. It, it is worth it when it's something that you love and are passionate about. And if you ain't doing your thing, it's like those things become, a lot harder. So just set you know? your, set your non-negotiables. Yeah. There's non-negotiables. I think just figuring yeah. those out is taking. Right. And I, I feel I like think it'll change too. It's called a 10 year town. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I feel like, so next month I've been there 10 years mm-hmm. and I was just having a conversation with someone the other day. It's like these kind of epiphanies go off as you are in the, a journey and a process. And I've always thought that a 10 year town means, um, that's how long it takes to be successful in Nashville. Like well, that's, how long you've got to make it. <clears throat> right. I always thought that's what it meant. Right. And now that I'm closing it on 10 years, I realize that, and maybe it's just me, but it hit me about six months ago. I was like, no, it doesn't mean that. It means it takes you 10 years to figure out like who you are and who you ain't going to be. And really sort of where, where you feel at like home at and you what know, that it, means for you. It's like you know? what you were just talking about though. It, it You go into it with one opinion of how you feel based on I mean everybody's got an opinion about what our business looks like yeah. what it feels like to travel with country music mm-hmm. you know everybody in their mind they have these fantasies and and yeah. what have you and even if that's something that you're called to do there's no way that you can go into it without some preconceived notions mm-hmm. of how things go so you have to back all and, and you really got to be sold out to it too in order yeah. to make that step but then as you see it start to transition I can imagine that it's more of that man is it am I the only one that feels this way? I mean, am I the only, I'm on the Island. Why don't I feel as passionate about writing, you know, bro country? You know, that's not what I came here to do. You know, I've talked a lot about the artist side versus the, the, the writer side, which I wish they would come up with different terms because yeah. a writer I mean, is a he, is, is as much of an artist as anybody. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, it's crazy how, and one's not better than the other to me. I mean, I, I yeah. well, yeah, it is to me cause I, been on this side of it with you it's just two it's just two different things and and a lot of times luckily i'm 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 able to wear matt and i are able to wear both hats because this joker's an unreal songwriter it's Um, ridiculous he needs to sing sing some r&b i mean seriously unreal (laughs) and i don't tell him enough but like uh and but it's crazy to me that it feels like the more that i've and i don't know if you felt this way but like it feels like the more that i've learned and the more i've experienced in this music journey the more that I feel like the more things get opened up to where I, the more I learn, the more I like yearn to learn. And the more that I find out there is to learn, um, the more you find about, out you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. About really, um, myself, what make, what makes me tick, what's really important and not just music and in life. It's like, um, which is a really cool sort of part about this journey that I never, you know, would, would think that would be there when I first started. We'll, you we'll know, take so. about 30 seconds to tell Matt how much you appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> I, I really I don't do want to leave that stone unturned. Stop. I am a, I'm a Matt still Stan, which he knows. I, and I said this other night, um, back in, uh, we, we were on a tour together. That's how we became friends. Um, and then top of 2020, right before the, I mean, me and you were on the bus together coming back from Boston mm-hmm. Made when the U-turn world shut and, down and made a U-turn in <clears throat> Massachusetts, came back to Nashville. Yeah. We had, <clears throat> yeah. To I, wait about two weeks for it to pass yeah. in our minds. Yeah. yeah. I remember that, those conversations, but no, I mean, uh, it's, it's cool to get to work with people that you're not only friends with, but also a fan of. And my favorite song of, of 2020 is everywhere, but on, he knows that. I um, absolutely. Love but I used to, I mean, I used to always be like, Jack, we used to go like, your jams on or whatever. I mean, and, uh, it's so good. 
anyway, my point is um, that it's really cool to be able to be really close friends with people that you um, love working with, but also are a fan of what they do, you know, and Matt. Y'all compliment each other. One of them. A lot. I think you're, I mean, it's pretty cool seeing you two bounce off of each other when you're doing a show. It's the first time I've gotten to see that personally. Um, Come on. Pretty good job. <laughs> We're going to get copyright hit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to do 30 seconds of it. There we go. Well, and, and pull just, one coffee, pull one concrete. Love that second go. verse. There you go. <laughs> so good. Well, and I think it about Ray and I, as we, you know, have a, um, We've had no one has the same path, but we've had some similar life experiences. Like we're both overeducated. We're both like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know, like I, you know, he, I, I don't know how it was for you, but like I, I was learning. I started playing music in college, and then, yep. and I know you went to that Eric Church show, and you're like, I'm gonna do this. And it was similar with some other bands for me, but I started playing in college, then went to grad school because really I had the opportunity to get that paid for uh, like as a TA and those yep. time demands are different than the time demands of play music. And so I was doing that and then kind of still like learning how, and you, you mm-hmm. have a similar like, you know, background on those kind of things. And, you know, I remember, um, you know, you got song about, you know, selling cars and things yeah. that, that, uh, that y'all done, you know, together. And, um, you know, with with me, it was working for my dad or working mm-hmm. for my my grandma on you know taking care of the farm and I mean I say all that to say you know like there's a lot of different paths but there are some similarities and yep. selling out to uh, do it like being making it be your dream like you said and trusting that it's not it's not always true because some you know it's not but if you put the work in you give it, you have an opportunity for good things to happen. And, and I think once you finally see some fruits of your labor, like once you finally chip away at that wall and you finally, finally get a little bit of traction, whether that's yeah. like an artist, you know, putting a song, even if putting a song on hold or like writing a song that yeah. impresses your friends in a good way, like, you know, that your true friends that are like, you know, would be happy if something good happened to you. If you write a song that they like, you know, I mean, th- that's a big deal. Like, you know, it's a it's a big deal because it's hard it's it's hard to write songs that are that are like. At first, it's hard to write songs. Then it's hard to write good songs, and then it's hard to not write a good song because everything in Nashville is like the guy that brings your pizza is the best guitar player you've ever heard. They just are the person yeah. that's bringing your coffee. It's making it a barista has an EP uh, that sings like a you wouldn't yep. believe. And so you get there and it's like so hard, but then, you know, you chip away and chip away and you just have to kind of trust that, that process a little bit of showing up for work. And then you finally get a little validation and you finally, it makes the work a little easier. It makes, okay, well, if I do this, there's no guarantee, but now I have, I can see that, you know, somebody liked that song. Oh, somebody put that song on hold. Oh, somebody cut that song. And it's like, you know, like a lot of us are, you know, there's like the Bailey Zimmermans and the um, Morgans and the Lukes wh- whose rise to the top would be analogous to Brooks, DJ, you know, mm-hmm. Tiger. And then there's guys like Ray and I whose grind up would be more like Akshay and Scotty. Th- well, no. I think y'all are heavy hitters, man. No, I, I, but, I but mean, he's more. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some of us that are. The corn fairy players before they get to the the main right. We're corn fairy players. Stage. We're guys that are, are that are trying to get our card and keep mm-hmm. our card. And then there's and then want to show up and and Mike do something on a Sunday to take you to that yep. that next level. Like you know, and, and it's very much that yeah. way. Like in yep. a sports analogy, and also the the muse in your head, like the talent, quote unquote, is just like coaching a star player. They're lazy. They're hard to motivate. But when you can motivate your own like creative side of your brain where you can get him out of bed and get him to the room, it's worth it because yeah. that is the thing that – and that's been my experience. It's been – it's like coaching a, a talented but lazy Oh, player. yeah. I so mean, do you feel like – does it make you feel kind of like a sixth man? It's tough because – Can't win a championship without one. Yeah, but it's but it's it is a team sport in that we have our teams, but mm-hmm. it's very much like golf. Mm-hmm. It's oh, yeah. like where oh. you know yeah. you have a team behind you, but especially as an artist, you, you know you are the quote unquote player. 
And so, you know, if you're getting invited to the, if, you know, if you're getting invited to the master sum, or if you're, you know, top 10 in it at the heritage or whatever you want to say, like, you know, I would say that'd be pretty analogous to where, you know, we are, we're keeping yep. a tour card yep. and, and we, you know, we hope to, and, and expect to have some big days, you know, on Sundays, but I absolutely, mean, that's kind of how it is. Let me ask you a question. What quantified, like you were saying that you had to be validated enough to know when, like to make that leap, what quantified that for y'all? Like for you to move well, to Nashville or for you to, to I, move to Nashville? I think. Cause that's a big, that's I think a, he was saying like, it's, it makes it the process a little, you're like, man, you get that little bit of validation. It's like, all right, it gives you, it makes that grind just a, that 1% easier to go do. But I think to make that leap, at least for me, there was none. That's what made it elite. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I had, I mean, no, I mean, we had, Jesse and I had a year's worth of conversations. Do I go? Do I stay? Just like talking about it. And I probably had taught myself out of <clears throat> not doing, you know, out of it 10 different times over the course of a year. No, not doing it. Doesn't make sense. Whatever. Yeah. And that thing kept nagging at me and nagging at me. And I just knew, I knew that if I didn't, I would always, always regret it. What a but tough there was, spot. That's a tough spot, too. There was zero, zero validation, though. I was like, I, my only validation was I can't not go even if two weeks in I go, well, I'm way in over my head and I come back. Well, then I've, yeah, that I've taken that. I've that taken, the, I've taken the what if off the table. Mm. And that's all, I, that's all it was for me at first. I was like, I've, there is not a world where I can wake up at one from 50, 50 years old, whatever the number might be and me go, that hurts. man, so what bad. if I would have, what if I would have like taken that leap of faith without knowing anything like, and not played it safe. Yeah. I would have never been able to get out of my head. So for me to make, that's the answer to that question was, was the, all the, it's what my not validation, but it was, that was my reasoning. And Just the validation the came much, much later. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's, that's what it was. So, How yeah. about you, Matt? My validation, well, you know, I started playing in, you know, I started playing, you know, my own stuff. I started writing songs immediately after mm -hmm. learning guitar. Like, I always, I really, even to this day, kind of see myself as a songwriter. And sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Like, it makes me, it makes me not as good at being an artist as I should be because if I was a little more attention seeking, and like, I mean that as a compliment, mm -hmm. like, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate the, the, the part of this that seems like work, which is like, the social media aspect. And I'm not going to sit here and complain about the way things are. They are the way things are. So, um, whatever, fine. But, uh, I, for me, it was, I, w I had a, you know, a band, I was putting out records and I thought it, they were good and they were, you know, they weren't, but, uh, you know, that's part of the growing and learning process. But I was in like the Texas music world. That was what I gravitated towards. And, um, I think, um, I had written a couple songs in um, that for Casey Donahue, Texas artist. I'd written a couple songs with Casey. him. Yeah, I'd written a couple songs with him, and they'd gone, you know, I guess number one on the Texas country chart, which you know they have their own chart, and cool. And that gave me the like push to go to move to Nashville. I wish I would have done it sooner, honestly. Like, you know, I had this. There's a difference between confidence and just like being blindly arrogant. Yeah, and, and not even in a in a like m malignant sense, but if you say thing, if if in your head you listen to this podcast and you're thinking, you know, you're gonna half at, you're gonna like dip your toe into whatever it is that you think you want to do. Like I thought, oh, I'll be in Nashville a week out of the month. I'll get a publishing deal and I'll write songs for other artists and I'll write my own stuff. That's a really, you know, like. I probably needed that arrogance, you know, to get me to town, but to think that you could part-time this stuff yeah. is like the people that part-time it full-time did at one time, they're yeah. like professors emeritus. Like they've already mm -hmm. done it and they're coming back to sort of do it or, you know, they there's part-time from their beach house that yeah. those songs paid for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And there's unicorns like the, there are, but in, yeah. in our world, I wanted to write country music. And I wanted to make, I wanted to have a, an indie country band, whether that was, you know, Texas or whatever kind of sounding stuff. And I thought that I could like, you know, th th to do that, you think that, that, that sort of assumes that you're good enough to do it. 
Yeah. And I mean, I was not in any way could could write an original song that that could cut through all of the great songs at that point. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I moved to Nashville after I'd written those you know couple songs there, and I mean I was here for, I was there for like two years without you know much interest as a writer you know yeah. and you know finally got an opportunity but that that was it for me yeah. were you working then too so i i could pretty much i from what shows i was playing i could live hand to mouth and just play music like i could i had a band i had a few places i could go and play and i was playing however many shows a year but then i also did all yeah i was working when i moved to nashville because i couldn't tour as much so i was like i drove uber I sold like used trucks with my dad. Like I would do all the digital stuff because, like you know, he was like you know, all of our dads with this like, internet. Exactly. Ruin the world. And I'm like, I literally just like list them on Craigslist, text or email or call the guy, and then have them go down and meet dad's yeah. guy and yeah. sell this truck. And so I would do that and list that stuff out. I worked on my and you know, took care of my grandma's farm before I moved to town. I worked on my dad on the construction side of his business. I, he was a contractor in oil and gas. I laid pipe and did all we were talking about this this morning. Um, Ray laid some pipe <laughs> at the dealership. Remember you, when you worked for oh, Ray laid some pipe gosh. and yeah. yo, I showed it, I showed him where, where we used to post up over there, the old Gerald Jones. Yeah. And I'll go, there's the selling car slot right there, which is just right down the street mm -hmm. from where we're at now. Mm -hmm. yeah that um, was interesting hey one thing and i'm just gonna let you guys marinate on this i got um reverend noah text me mm -hmm. two words oj died yeah i just saw that when he put OJ the phone Sim up oj simpson oj simpson. simpson died well r.i.p what a uh technically i think it was you know uh, 20 what, years ago but i think the the physical act of it just took what a polarizing um uh, you, unique legacy, one of the most there, unique legacies, and that's a fall from grace that is yeah. kind of like I don't know. Especially yeah, I mean, and I'm not. I, I, I'm definitely not uh, smart enough to know all the stuff that no one could ever know unless they were, you know, have been around. But man, what a wild! Uh, what a what a yeah. That's he wild. A ball, that he, he was a ball runner. I mean, he would carry the pig skin. Yeah, I mean, you know, bills. a guy who's been bills. famous for a bunch of bunch of different stuff. Um, but uh, above all, rest in peace. I mean, know? he's earned he, he everybody's he's... respect enough for what he did, you know, for the craft. That it's okay to say that. I mean, I don't think anybody should celebrate something like that, you know. Oh no, you'll have yeah. a bunch of cornholes out there doing it, but you know, I'm sure that there's people that kids. cared about him that are heartbroken today, and I feel yeah, for them. Absolutely. I yeah, I mean, yeah, all didn't the, know yeah. him personally. Yeah, that's as far as I can go. Yeah, exactly. Didn't know him personally. I didn't know him personally. Yeah, um, it, and, and I'm sure that there's, you know. Obviously, there's always his story, their story, and the truth. So, hey, I did have one question to ask you that um, Matt, just because I was over here thinking about it, because we we have led very similar um, paths to Nashville and stuff. I've always asked myself, and people have asked me before, do you ever wish that you uh, move sooner? And I would always be like, in my mind, man, in a perfect world, yeah, because you know I got started late. I mean. I moved three days before my 29th birthday, which is ancient in Nashville terms as far as day one. Um, but I think that I, me personally, I'm just curious to hear what your thoughts on it. I don't think that I would, the fear that I had, not fear, but the thought I had that I might move there and get chewed up and spit out, I think would have happened to me earlier in life. And I think it, I needed that life experience for me personally till I was almost 30 to be ready for what the, the challenge that was waiting ahead. So, um, you needed a couple notes, even though I wish maybe I was ready earlier in life. I was not until I did. So, um, I'm just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, our stories are, you know, very similar along those lines. I, I think that if I were to go and replay how things have worked out, yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the high end of the spectrum of how good things can work out. Yep, I'm sitting absolutely. here, you know, with whatever couple number one songs, you know, not, not to, not to flatter myself and talk about whatever, oh, yeah. but you know, like I've enjoyed some success that, you know, if you'd have told me that I'd have had when I moved to Nashville, I'd be over the moon. About absolutely. It. You know, I do think that, and really a lot of it is, is COVID related because like, it's hard to explain <laughs> where we were yeah. at the time. Like Ray and I were on tour it, it, together 
And, um, I mean, we were selling out venues from 500 to 1200 people from San Diego coast to, to coast, co- coast to coast. I mean, we were yeah. on a, that tour was like 25 something headline dates. Yeah. And we weren't, we weren't selling out everything, but we sold out a lot. We sold out New York City. We sold out San Diego. We sold out a bunch of rooms in between there. And the ones we didn't sell out were big rooms and mm-hmm. off of that one hit. And then we had like five dates left of that tour. And that tour bus turned around in basically Gillette, Boston, um, you know, Foxborough basically turned around and went home and went home for a year. And so... Like all that momentum, and then the second, you know, number one that Ray was so kind about, and I really appreciate it because that song means a lot to me. It's one of the times I was like, "Oh, I love this song," and it mm-hmm. worked. Mm-hmm. And that happened during COVID, so it was, it's almost like you know, in some ways, it you know, it didn't happen uh, in terms of like momentum. And yeah. so since then, it it's been like this starting sort of not over from square one, but a lot of starting over, you know, like a lot of, you know, uh, so I, the long way to say, yeah. if if I had started earlier and, and had the same amount of like success going into co like the, the, the ramp would have been way, you know, like the, the trajectory was, yeah. would, would have sustained, you know, maybe would have sustained itself, but you never know. You never know. And, and it's, I mirrored what you just said. I mean, um, because so many, you didn't, no one knew how to like navigate that year, what wound up being a year or more. And so you're in the middle of it and you're like trying to do everything that you know how to do, but so many of your kind of tools are taken away because you can't go on the road. You can't do this, you can't do that, whatever. And so I, in, in a, different way like dance was popping like while we were on tour anything like you dance was like i mean do it and then they were singing it back every yeah night to you. I mean, the had, world got a lot of legs. the world got shut down and like me personally i didn't have the wherewithal to know man how do you keep this going through this crazy time and i think the short answer is you just it was probably impossible um but on the other side of that it did in a lot of ways like for me as, as an artist too it felt like starting over and even though we tried to like revive that song and and breathe new life into it it it's like it that was the moment that it had and then it led into this thing that none of us had any control over and so it's just like another another reminder to me that like control the controllables and do the best you can because there's so many things that you can't that you can't control and you can't control a lot of the outcomes um and uh but that man what a weird it completely changed that was. music, though. I mean, it really did. The yeah. Industry afterwards, mm-hmm. now with the TikTokers and everybody else, you know, it totally changed because everybody was working during 2020 and, yeah. and you know, social media and, and using that outlet to yeah. get their music out. And whenever we transitioned out of COVID, to me, it seems like there are so many industries that never transition transitioned out of COVID. Right. And so oh, yeah. the guys sure. that you know, the way that the music industry had been done for so many years prior to that. And you've gotten to a point where you're good at it and you've kind of got it figured out and then you're on that path. And then to have your legs cut out from underneath you to try to get back and not be a TikToker and not be a, a social media guru. Mm-hmm. You're like, what's the, I mean, I'm doing everything that I was doing before, but there is absolutely no way that I can, you know, I can fit this square peg in a round hole now with the industry changing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole, um, you know, it's just there's a, a three hour podcast we can do on, all the ways that the industry has changed and evolved and it's always doing that. Um, and you just got, you know, I think it's just, a even more of a reminder to back to circle back to what we said earlier, like just whatever your, whatever sets you on fire, it's like coming back to that and doing wherever that, you know, you can control that. You control how good the songs are. Um, you know, how the song good or bad is not a uh that's not a thing i mean songs that speak to you you can control that you can write try to write the best songs you can and you can work your tail off and that's really all you can do and then also have the the knowledge of maybe in ways that it's changed or evolved and try to kind of um use that knowledge the best of your ability but that's all you can do and and i would say that the thing that COVID really exposed that a lot of people knew that I didn't really know. And I like, 
unfortunately, I've come to the realization that you cannot, you can't write yourself out of having to do the social media stuff. Like mm-hmm. I thought that you could, if you wrote a good enough song, it would transcend the sh- the stuff we don't like to do, you know, on the social media, blah, blah, blah. But, um, but it's just, you, you can't like, yeah. and that's He's the thing that that's the part that sucks is that, um, I've spent too much, probably not too much time, but like the bang for the buck of writing a great song is not what you, what I expected it to be. Um, when I started doing this, like, Yes, you have to have great songs. I I love songs. That's why Ray and I get along. So his songs are so good. Um, but f- for the most part, like the song is secondary to the in, the the TikTok presence, and that's just a fact of the matter. You it's can give life now. Yep. you can give someone with a TikTok presence a song that's not as good. Well, like you know, whatever. I mean, technically not as good, but I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, it's more valuable to have the TikTok or Instagram following than it is, like the great song. All yeah. all things being equal, and that's a tough pill to swallow. <clears throat> yeah, but it doesn't do you any good to act like it's not true. Right, and yeah. it's, it's what we talked about when we were having the when we were under the umbrellas. It's it is frustrating on my end because we've got a similar situation in in mm-hmm. the apparel industry that the quality of product has been trumped by the popularity of the person promoting the product. Yeah. And if you're not already social media, just a, a, a freak and, and, and super influential, you know, you can take a bad product and put it on and, and it really doesn't matter what product it is. Stick the right logo on or brand or on, whatever. Put yeah. it on a influential person and people are going to buy it because they're not making the decision sure. anymore based on the brand. They're making yeah. the decision based on who's wearing it. And yeah. so, we get stuck with a bunch of good songs in the vault that we can yep. sell, hopefully in a catalog, and then I can have a buy one get one sale one day <laughs> with all the stuff that I think so. One thing I know, we just go, we, we're gonna keep um, me and old young still. We're gonna keep grinding, keep doing our thing. Yeah, and, we just uh, built we, uh, We're built different, and it it almost sounds like I I I really sometimes don't phrase things the right way because sometimes it sounds like in a negative light, you know, when I say, Oh, it's not as good as songs matter and they will always matter. Yeah. And they'll always be a big deal. But I'm just saying the difference between, you know, the, all things being equal. Yeah. One of those things in the marketplace matters the most, but if you love music and you came in to, if you, if you love music, there's, there's never been a better time to be a consumer oh, of yeah. music. Mm-hmm. You can get everything at your fingertips. More is being made. A lot of it is, um, you know, not great, but some of it is fantastic. Yes. You know, there's never been a better time. And like, we're sitting here talking about this. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like sometimes I can, especially coming off a morning when there was bourbon flowing last night, that my, <laughs> en- my like energy level isn't where it should be. Like, it is the best. Music is the best. Everything is the best. Oh, no. I think you did it's a great Master's week. And, yeah. uh, great job of saying all that. <laughs> no, well, seriously. And, 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 and the, the point you were making about the, it, it's just evolved to where sometimes you want the music business to be all about music. And just sometimes it ain't. And I don't and that's, know if it you know, ever has been. I don't, it hasn't. It's yeah. just in different that's ways the, now. That's the fallacy. Yeah. Like b- big commercial music, everyone that you could name that's a legend, it's never been what you think it is. Like if you think, I heard this, um, uh, Allison Veltz and, Laura, and uh, Emily Wiseman were doing a um, podcast the other day, and Laura said something, who's a huge songwriter. Uh, Laura said, if, if you're an artist and you think you're going to sign a record deal to release songs that, you love you better you better pause for a minute because if it's a major record label or like an if it's a you know like sony or whatever you know you will have different concerns and the more the more success you have they are going to put the pencil to the paper and figure out like uh what the best bottom line thing is and that's not new you know that's yeah. right that's that's not new, and it's a fallacy to think that it ever was. But right now, you can make the music that you want to make and put it out. And you know, there's a lot of people that that it's pretty awesome. That. Yeah. 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 All right. This I feel like I know you got to get to a golf tournament here, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Last question for me. Hey, before you do that, can I do one short little thing? Sure. I just want to. 
I got a product here that I want to, to throw at you guys. <laughs> yes. And this is as random as it gets, but I want to get your opinion on what this is. Okay. It's simple. I know this is going to be great. I know, don't get caught in the, sh- don't get lost in the shape. No, get lost in the shape. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? That's the question I'm asking you. Hold on. Same thing. All right. For the for the listeners at home, we were just handed something that looks like a very skinny and twice as long feminine hygiene product. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's exactly what I had going through my mind when I opened it. And then you open it, oh. oddly enough. And then This looks like elbow tape that they put on the, the old NFL players with the old AstroTurf. Oh, yeah. The old one elbow si- tape. One side is sticky. The other side is soft. Uh, you peel off the back. And white, where cotton, do you stick it? Sterile. Where, where does that stick? It goes in go? your hat to keep it from sweat rings in it. A hundred percent. Is that wow. what it is? Is, there, is that really money what ball, it is? Yeah, money ball mat with the. Oh, come on, dude. It's That's the, great. It's, it's the liner, and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. And I worked with a company trying to come up with a cool way because the other ones are super tall and you can see them through the hat. And I thought, man, that's lame. I don't want anything like that. So then they sent that, and I thought, I cannot send this to a customer. Yeah. <laughs> and because I'm so worried without any kind of graphics on it or it is not normal. It literally is. It's a great idea. I'm putting it in my head. Yeah, right you now. need it. But see, that was before that hat has got the Supremo, um, in, which is what provoked me to do what I did yeah. and change the, the sweatband on hats because I thought that they could have been done so much better. And uh, everybody here today is wearing one of them with the new yeah, sweatband. sweatband. But prior to that, check the lettuce out on Stell. Huh? Oh, yeah, he's got the flow. He's got, the, he's got nice cabbage. It's just like a lot of times. So Big you, you gave guy. me my better than most, and it's black. And I didn't want to play, go- I won't play golf in it because the black will show the, the you get sweat the rain. The, you get the, the white the mountain range. range. It's kind of like a mountain range. Exactly. The Alps. So that's one thing that we need to do real quickly. All right. Before your last question. Before my last question, it's that took it way off topic, but um, I know that's my job. And then you got to get that ready too. So I think country music is seeing a lot of outside influence now from artists in different genres. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good or bad. bad. I wanted to know your guys' take on that and how much influence does money have on bringing a song to number one? You know what I'm saying? So I won't mention a certain song, but there's a certain song out by a female artist. Okay. I will. It's called Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em. Okay. How much, like, is it a good country song or is there just so much influence and money behind it that it's driving it i, I mean i don't really get uh, and i try not too early and i'll probably sit i try not to get into the good or bad because yeah. because that's all subjective um is it my favorite no it's some it's a lot of people's favorite probably yeah. um and is there there's always um it, money in the sense of like there's promo teams there's all these things that have to go into like country radio and marketing and all that. So it always takes a lot of money. She probably has a bigger pool than most, um, to pull from. But I mean, I don't know as far as how much that, uh, like, I guess my question stems from if she was an independent artist, just mm -hmm. moved to Nashville and and cut that song, would it be as, as good as it is? No, but I mean, you like if, if I would have cut when it rains, it pours, it wouldn't have been as big as it was. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. like, that's fair. I think I you know, think that's a pretty good. Example. You know what I mean? It just uh, some of it is 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 the, the she has she has built this platform mm. um to where it's it's I wouldn't say anything that she could put out anything and people would listen would, to would it, listen to it. But almost. I, um I, yeah, I would tend to agree, you know, you know I think so, it's but that's across the board though. You know that yeah, there's I mean, that's, big 4 or 5 that could put out anything and and sure. And whether I like it or not doesn't matter. You know, I found that out a long time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Don't you, know, you so. need some some situations like this to happen? Don't you think it betters? And your other part of the question was, look at it with I the, think it's great that there's, great, great for the genre, yeah. right? More eyeballs on it. Um, it's it's an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for crossover, opportunity for people that are her fans, for instance, just using this Beyonce song as a just one example. It gives her fans an opportunity to go, kind of come in the country space and maybe they find step breaking in boots because of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just to, for instance, 
you would like to think a lot of that's happening because of it. So I think it's a great thing. I mean, I mean, sometimes opportunities may get not taken, but there will not be the same opportunities for um, people in the quote unquote, um, you know, like the coming up. State yeah. I mean, the know. people that are already in the country space, maybe some of those opportunities are um, not there because somebody has come from a, you know, a, another genre or platform and taking those. So like th- that part of it is um, maybe unfortunate at times, but again, it's, that's maybe part of it. I think for the genre, it's great on the ground level for some of the people. Maybe it's not great, you know, in, in, in country, as far as if, if you're one of those people that misses out on opportunity because of it, but it's like, that's life. Yeah. That's just I mean, life. It's the correlation so, between when you allow celebrities to play in golf tournaments you're keeping somebody from qualifying to get to play in that golf tournament, that that's what they do for a living. And so I think it's kind of a similar situation with a lot of people. Let's, yep. while we're, he's marinating on his next one, let's just, no, I'm good. I'm, we got to drop this in our mouth real quick. We, <laughs> we don't really have like a cool segue this is into a this. Jesse-ism. I don't know. He was just like, I just, he literally texted me. He's like, get something. I just need sour. the weirdest. I didn't know sour technically. I know how you get open the- I I mean go to the I can show the if we were real country sour. boys we would have knives and all that cool stuff but we we don't. fly too much we're yeah yeah. yeah like I can't keep an eye on no box up. cutters yeah, right. Right. have you got yours open already yeah of course gosh I'm such a it's gosh. like serrated on one end go to, yeah go sideways like from the perforated like yeah. top I like how you said perforated 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 and I t- and I got what you said too oh I got it now oh wow. You could almost like Wow This is an off brand Pop Rocks I was going to say this is a straight up Trademark infringement Isn't it? What's different about this than regular Pop Rocks? Man I know there's people at home that are like me And uh, have a Absolute blind rage (laughs) With ASMR Like I hate it I can't hardly listen to commercials That have like liquids being poured into glasses i hate it so bad so somebody right now is uh having the worst time of their life and i'm sorry <laughs> yeah I apologize <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm going to the dentist i did have an right idea but it. i had kind no of delicious. control over it taste is good yeah yeah like it does it. i think i would like it better if they didn't have to mess it up by making it blow up and shout know. out china for making this i'm sure it, you think it's gone but then they surprise you and come yeah. back here they are all right cool well you know i think we've can sum a lot of things up with Nashville and and with what we do and I think in general with what everybody does your desire to win has just got to trump your fear of losing yeah just got to go get it and as long as you just understand that look there's a possibility that this isn't going to work out but I can't live with myself if I don't give it a shot Mm -hmm. and I desire to be successful and to try to impact people because that's what we both do. We want to impact people. We're big on community and trying to bring people together. And, and, you know, I look at the situation with Beyonce, no different than I think the, you know, what happened with jelly roll getting welcomed, welcomed into the, into the fold where a lot of people might not have, I think they've seen, there's been some pretty good jams come out of that. So, Oh yeah. Can I just, can I, I want want you to more than anything, Matt, you just don't understand. I just, I, you know, I feel like sometimes that we have to couch any kind of criticism that might have a whiff of like anything extra from it because, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about Beyonce and Beyonce is uh is a a black woman in a space dominated by white dudes. And that brings to bear some some things that we all want to navigate because I no one in here thinks that because of that is why she shouldn't have a voice. Like if right. anything, like country music is my favorite country music, my favorite music in general. Like my most listened to records last year, like two of them were Taylor Swift. Like I love right. yeah. um, music that is, I love all kinds of music. You know, I think the problem that, that people have um, with, with it is like, for me, if it comes off as a side project or if it comes off as a market that needs to be serviced, yeah, that bothers me. Um, because I feel like country music, we traffic in authenticity. Mm-hmm. That's what some of the, um, the, you know, the biggest stuff, you know, is like when, when Luke has a record called what you see is what you get, that kind of says it. And I think that what, what turns people off to that is that it comes, it seems as if it's unauth- inauthentic in, in a way. 
And I think that's fair criticism. Mm -hmm. I think there are songs on that project that I like. And I think there are songs on that project that I don't. Um, But then also having to be so cautious about having an opinion on music um, because of all the implied baggage that could be um, the reasons that people don't like it. You know, it could be people don't like it because of who she is and what she stands for. And that's not what I'm saying at all. But I, I do think that, um, I have a hard time with that as a single, uh, because it doesn't feel, um, uh, authentic and it may be authentic to her. Um, uh, but it, um, so, you know, who can speak to authenticity, right? But, um, I just, I don't, I don't think that criticism of her music, not her, her music, I'm a love Beyonce. Um, but criticism of that music does not equal criticism of like, uh, uh like any sort of like political correct yeah, concerns, sure. like setting that aside. If we're talking about the music, I like, I, I like the song on, on there on that record that she does with Miley Cyrus 10 times more right. than, than the single. And so I just want there to be like room for criticism yeah. for that kind of stuff, that's, because that's, that's treating a song like a song. That's good. And I know some people hate it be, you know, there are bigots in this world and country music is no different and, and country music. Listeners are, are no different. Uh, I know a lot of rappers don't like it when white rappers are good at it yeah. or when white rappers are in the space. And that's because it's not inauthentic. Um, but you know, if we can separate her as an amazing artist an amazing person who's won more Grammys than ever than anyone has ever done. And her trying to do a country project where some of it's good. And some of it, I I keep using that good and bad. I should say like some of it moves me, some of it doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't is because it seems from the social media presence to, um, how it was, you know, rolled out with a huge marketing plan with all this money behind it. It seems a little inauthentic, um, to me. Right. Um, satirical in it, a sense. It, it also reminds me of MJ deciding to go play baseball. There were guys sitting in the dugout, you know, <laughs> that were like, what in the world? This guy, hey, flew he, batted, in. He, he batted over two, you know, he flew in. And, and I think that anytime that you've got somebody that, and, and who am I to say anything about her trying to do anything else? Because it's, it's, she carves her own path and, and sure. more power to her. And it's thankfully we live in a country that does not force us to ride around listening to what we don't want to listen to. But I'd never would, I, I would never want the space to become something that you had to be authenticated prior to getting into a sure. Because you don't know until you till you try. Yeah. She's she from Houston, yeah. She, I mean, yeah. and there's no way anybody can take anything away from her. But just for the people that are listening, just quit making it a. If you don't like it, it's because you're you're racist. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. And the people that it does are irrelevant anyway. Nobody. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, ain't got time for. Just that don't give them. Don't yeah. give them a voice. Just don't feed the fire, um, and just. Promote it. All right. Jesse, we got to get y'all to a golf tournament. So yeah, we do have to go tee it up, up here in a minute. Um, Literally. Thank y'all, boys. Payday, Ray. So much. DJ yeah. Stell. Thank you so much for uh, taking in the time and coming in here. Thank you for the Copenhagen. I'm going to start dipping again. <laughs> We're going to have to teach you uh, some lyrics, but thanks. You know, yeah. you, you know I appreciate you guys more than anything in the world, yeah. and nothing makes me more proud than seeing you guys wear our stuff and, and raise a, a big part of that success for us if you want to call it that i don't want to call anything success it's sustainment so cool i appreciate you guys being love it doing what you do. appreciate it thank y'all of course. all right guys that's a wrap thank you so much for listening if you would please leave us a review and a rating That is how we get the word out about this podcast. And lastly, go check us out at Kings Creek Apparel. Thank you.